Well, happy new year to all us from to all of you from all of us here at Wisconsin Prep Hockey from Mr. Berg Sunberg Sunberg. That's a catcher, isn't it? Former catcher Jim Sunberg. We're already off on a tangent. <laughs> Del we are so we are so easily distracted. Del Scanlon's with us. And also uh, Chris McGurk. Chris, how are you? I'm well, all you, you, you have, Do we have to introduce him properly as Chris McGurk, Wisconsin Prep Hockey's second favorite hockey official? Chris McGurk, Wisconsin Prep Hockey's <laughs> second favorite hockey official. Good evening, Chris. Hey, how you doing, guys? Doing? I will. Uh, I, I will take that. <laughs> knowing uh, a little bit of nepotism in the Berg family, but I'll still take it. Well, I think I inadvertently on our Twitter account made you downgraded you to our second favorite Canadian as well. Um, because wow. I believe I, I believe I tagged Mako Belkovic as our favorite Canadian. Okay, but he, he's gone. He's out of state oh. now. That don't count. Yeah, he's in Chris? he's in Ohio. Coach oh, in see, Green. Bill, Bill Bill spent a couple of years in Bowling Green, so there's a connection there. You know. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Mako is a uh, solid, solid guy. He does a lot for hockey. He's, uh, I, I will stand back. His resume is a little bit better <laughs> guys, than mine. Yeah, he's uh, he's also quite the character as well. So uh, that he is. Yes, he is. If you've ever follow his Twitter account and very opinionated, Chris. Let's talk a little bit about uh, our panel here of uh, so-called know-it-alls. Let's talk a little bit about COVID and the world of referees. And obviously with this going on, you guys have uh, different things that you need to do and um, just kind of uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's um, like anybody else, it's, it's been a real different type of a year. Um, from this scheduling part, I, I'm good friends with a lot of our schedulers and uh, they're, they're pulling their hairs out. They, they they don't know what what happens. They wake up on a Monday morning. They have one schedule in their hand, and by the time Saturday comes up, uh, eight to fifteen things have changed. So um, those guys have got a, a lot going on. Um, every weekend, it seems some team goes into quarantine or some team comes out of quarantine. So we're getting games dropped or adding games because um, somebody's filling in for those games. And then there's also sometimes um, an official. We'll have to go into quarantine, so that ends up uh, having to change crews and, and things like that. Um, it's been um, quite a different year. Um, we're in, in some buildings with absolutely no fans in them, so we don't know what to call because nobody's telling us what to call. Um, <laughs> um, no, and then then there's limited limited fans in some of them, um, you know. And then when things are little bit you know things are getting a little dicey you just have to take kind of take a step back and say at least we're on the ice the kids are getting to play we're getting out there uh doing what we love to do and uh just think of the the big picture and every game we we have we have to realize it may be our last and that goes for for the players it goes for the officials um goes for the coaches we just have to take what we get each day and, and work from it. You guys have to go through a lot of changes in terms of protecting yourselves while you're out on the ice. Talk a little bit about the changes there you guys as referees have to go through. Um, well, we're, we're like the players and, and everybody there. We're masked up. Um, so, some guys have decided uh, that they would, in, instead of uh, blowing the traditional whistle, uh, they've got themselves these little four-inch tube um electronic whistles that it's just a press like we were talking about it's like being on jeopardy you press the whistle and and it goes um has a little bit of a different tone more of a uh, higher pitch basketball tone um i've decided that i'm going to use a gator i pull the gator up and i and i blow through it um i gotta blow a little harder to to get the, the same decibel level through my um my whistle but uh, I, I've decided to go that. And then we got some guys that are actually, and this makes zero sense to me, pulling down the gator and then blowing the whistle um, and then going right back up. So 
Um, there's, there's a couple different methods that some people want to use. Um, like I said, I've decided to use the gator, blow right through the mask. Um, many guys are using the electronic whistle. Thing about the electronic whistle is you probably want to have two of them on, on your person because either batteries will wear out or sometimes it's just malfunction or even just have your standard uh, regular whistle with you too. Um, but you do need some sort of a backup. Um, so that's the kind of the protection we're taking, you know, sanitizing between periods, no handshaking. Um, coaches meetings are, are minimal. I, I've decided uh, in my games uh, for my coaches meetings, I'm just going to slide over to each bench during warm up and ask them, you know, is everybody properly, properly equipped? Um, we're not going to do a, a, a traditional meeting and ask them if they have any questions. And at that point, I just kind of ask each each coach, make sure your player is coming out ready to play. And ready to play means with his mask up. And if it falls down during play, we're not going to stop play for it. Um, but, you know, we do want to be safe. We want to be safe out there um, that nobody else gets sick. So we're, we're asking everybody to come out ready to play. If your mask falls down, that, that's what happens. I got some kids coming out. They're using their mask as a chin strap and that's doing nobody any good and not helping what to get us to the other side of this. So I was going to ask about how are the kids uh, handling it? Are they pretty good about it? Or is there, you know, some forms of resistance guys like, you know, you're not going to make me wear this. And, and no, so I, haven't, on. Yeah, I haven't run into anything like that. Uh, mostly they've been fairly compliant uh, in the sense that, Hey, you know, you, I want to be out here, you know, you're risking your teammates, you're risking me, um, you know, just, just come out ready to play. And, and they go, yep, sorry. And then they, they, they do it quick. And I just say, you know, next time, please come out ready to play. And um, it, it's tough because we're, we're at a point where we have to make calls on the ice. We don't have to, we don't want to be the mask police too. We, we have enough to worry about in, um, in, in high school hockey than that, having to be the mask police too. Um, so you ever how, hear to call a penalty how, on any kids? Not for a mask. I, I, so how, okay. how, how, how can you be the mask police and the uh, uh, mouth guard police at the same time? I mean, how, you, got, you got a kid with his uh, mask down in his chin and his mouth guard, you know, tucked over in the corner or <laughs> because we, 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 we've all seen that. I mean, those, those high school players don't really like to keep those that that mouth guard where it belongs. Yeah, you know, you pick your battles, Bill. You, you <laughs> pick your battles. Uh, that, that's the the whole thing about officiating is you you, you pick a you choose a battle, you pick it, and uh, you know we're, we're certainly not going to do. Let me see your mouth guard. You know, so yeah. It's do you guys yeah, even right now? Do you even have access, like pregame or between periods, access to like the the referee's room? Because I know in a lot of rinks, the referee locker room is the size of a closet, um, and you're already cramming right. three people in there. Um, do you guys even have access mm -hmm. to that in a lot of arenas? Um, well, uh, there have been some mod modifications made. Um, I was in Wapaka a couple weeks ago. They put us in one of the uh, old dressing rooms, so the three of us were in there, plenty of room. Uh, Cornerstone is, has got a couple rooms for us now. Uh, so when we have the changing of, of the officials, we don't have six guys in one room. Um, so Cornerstone has, has got a couple referee rooms now um, where uh, the team I'm a, a help out with, uh, we have a referee room and then we've also using one of the, the other uh, like party room for the referees. So th the rinks are accommodating us where they can. Um, I haven't run into a situation uh, during the high school season where I've been uncomfortable. Um, there was one situation during some of the USA hockey stuff that I did that there's just way too many guys in one of the locker rooms. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to go find somewhere else. And, and I just went off to another room. Um, but during the high school season, we've been accommodated very well. Well, because we hear a lot about, you know, the players and the coaches and that interaction. We didn't, you know, we haven't heard a lot about officials. And, you know, we've talked about this several times over the last, officials aren't getting any younger. And yeah. <laughs> um, there's always fewer and fewer officials coming into it. So, like, by and large, the officials group is probably 
older than the coaches group, I would imagine. So, you know, and we're dealing with a pandemic that inordinately affects older people. Um, I think the yeah. officials should probably be taken care of. It's already a horrible job. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not a horrible job. Um, it, it is what you make it. Um, yeah, you, you're, you're not wrong, Bill. Um, I'm uh, at 61 years old. I'm on the low end of the high risk. And um, I'm probably with, within our, our um, referee group here in Northeast Wisconsin. I'm top five oldest guys probably out here. Um, we would like to be younger um, just for recruiting basis. We'd, we'd like to be younger, but overall um, there's a lot of respect amongst each other here with the referees that we're looking after each other when we're going into those rooms. And, you know, I, I carry hand sanitizer in my bag at all times. And, you know, I, I make sure I'm washing my hands and getting the mask up when I can uh, in the locker room, just, just for the safety of everybody and trying to get to the other side of this. Well, besides th this particular, you know, pandemic affecting things, there has been not just this year, but in pre there's kind of a shortage of officials overall. Is that is that not still true? It's not exclusive to hockey. It's it's just everything. Um, every every sport, high school sport, is, is struggling for officials. Um, you know, here uh, and I'm I'm based out of the Appleton area. Um, we have a really solid um, feeder group through our USA. Uh, program. Um, our problem is that we, we can groom these kids along, get them out of high school, then they go to college and typically they don't go to college in our area. Um, they'll referee a little bit during college for some extra money and then they get out of college. They'll referee maybe a little bit more and if they're good at it, they'll, they'll, they'll keep on the path. But the, the, the kids that we need to start filling our shoes, they start their own families. And once that happens, they got their jobs, their families, we, we kind of lose them and we don't get them back until they're near 40 years old uh, when they can free up a little bit of time. Um, you know, we've got some in our area here, we've got a number of guys still in their twenties um, that are, that are going to be great. Um, they already are pretty good. Um, just going to be difficult to keep them when they start their families. Um, there's a really large void in the thirties, we don't see a whole lot of hockey officials that are in their thirties. Um, it just, time doesn't, it's not a, a real priority for them, given what they have starting their families, starting their careers and buying a house and not being able to run out to the rink at, at a, at a whim. So, um, you know, the 30 year olds are the most athletic and able to do our sport, but with the age and maturity of a 40 year old, maybe that you can handle the, the emotions probably a little bit better. Um, Cause there, there's a lot of things to consider when you're officiating a hockey game, not just the athletic part of it. Uh, Chris, qu quick question. Uh, mm -hmm. I'd been, I did WIAA football a little bit. Now mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure how that works compared to, um, hockey, I know for football, it's kind of hard for a new official to break in because they got so many of the crews that are set up already. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard for a new official to break in. And so then you end up losing guys, you know, cause it's like, okay, I can't ever get in to get in there. How does it work with the hockey? Yeah, that's a great point, Del. Um, f football and, and I think basketball similar, uh, with, with the crews in that, um, I've, I've always kind of been, not, not a real fan of that, that crew system. Um, with hockey, um, our local guy, Dave King, does a great job of getting our kids that have, have left for college when they come home at Christmas, and they're home for Christmas for, geez, a, a month, uh, something like this year, they're home almost, almost two months. And he tries to get so, those guys into as many games as possible. And he'll get them into JV games, girls games, you know, as many games as they can handle, he'll, he'll try and get them in there. And, and what that does is, is get them familiar. And, and he works them with a, um, a whole bunch of different guys. Um, and that's the great thing about hockey is that we 
work with different officials all the time and and you learn something from from uh from each and every official because everybody does something different um and then you're not just based on uh working with one guy if i'm working with one guy all the time and i got some and he can't make one night and i got to bring somebody else in i'm not going to be real comfortable because i don't know what this other guy calls so i'm going to be you know not only looking at the game i'm going to be looking at him i'm worrying about what he does whereas what we're doing here is that we're working with different officials all the time we're bringing in new guys we're bringing in the younger guys we work them on the lines get them accustomed to protocols how to handle yourself um you know we, we can't afford to be so clickish that we can't get new people in so i don't i don't know how it is down there um in, in the fox valley area. Up, up up here for the other part um like 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 when in Antigua, the 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 linesman was a local guy, and the the, the referees were brought in. And it was usually a crew. Um, usually, you know, they, they traveled in pairs, but not necessarily all the time. But um, the linesman was a local guy, mm -hmm. and and the, the the referees, you know, came in pairs. But you know, sometimes they'd be split up too. Is that how it is in other places? Um, no, I, I don't see it. Um, you know, Northwoods is a, is a little bit different, Bill, because because um, of the travel restrictions. You know, here within um, with the Fox Valley, we we um, we're based out of here. Um, you know, Dave King is based out of Winnicani, and and he's scheduling, and he's sending us all of us um, from Green Bay down to Fond du Lac, out to Beaver Dam. That. Um, over to Sheboygan, that, that's kind of Dave's um, um, area of, of scheduling. And we're going out there all the time. Well, not, not all of us, but we're, those, those are the places that we, we have to cover. Um, and uh, who, whoever's there kind of goes. And, you know, there's, there's no, I'm working with this guy and this guy only uh, within our group. Um, and, 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 that's the best way to do it because if you get to the later in the season and when WIAA is uh, doing our scheduling anymore, not the local guys, uh, you got to be prepared to work with different people. Um, and that's, um, that means a lot that, you know, you're able to uh, conform to not necessarily conform, but able to adapt to what uh, another official is doing and be able to work together to, to get the, that game done in a, in a good result. Or just be I, I, the linesman, right? Pardon me. I said, or just be the linesman. Or just, yeah. I, I can see that because um, I mean, I I did I did a lot of you know youth hockey, and we did uh, for years. I did the the JV games in, in Antigo, mm -hmm. and um, we had a couple of different partners there, and it was easy because uh, it, I was working with the same guy, you know, every game, mm -hmm. and you know, if something happened down in the corner. That I look, you know, like that looks suspect, but you know, I can see that, you know, I can see from the position he's at that, you know, he didn't call it, so it must have been okay, you know, and so so I, I'd let it go. Other times I could look and I'd see, you know, if something happened on there, and I could just see, you know, well, I, obviously he couldn't see that, so you know, I, I should call it. But I mean, knowing your your partner is knowing your partner makes it easy. A lot of times I, I absolutely it does like you said uh that that case in point where you're the you're the the trailing official and there's a play right in on top of of your partner uh, sometimes you're just too darn close to make the call and you know i've been in that situation where you know something happens right beside me and i'm you know trying to swing out of the way or whatever and i hear the big collision or i, or I miss something and I'll look back to the neutral zone. I'll see my partner's hand in the air and I'll just go, thank goodness. Um, you know, I, I have no problem with anybody um, making that call, even though it's right beside me, it's let's get the call right. Now we know what kind of conversations the, the coaches associations have with the WIA on an annual basis. What do the officials have is like, is there a group that speaks for you? Is there someone that speaks for you? Are you kind of at their whim? Well, um, you know, I, I'm somebody who's been 
treated very, very well by WIAA. Um, um, I, I think we, we do have a referee, um, Ryan Reichel, who, who um, is in constant contact and, and Ryan's been at it for, for years and is, a, and is a great guy. And, and Ryan will, um, you know, kind of talk to officials during the year. Um, you know, we don't have a whole lot really to complain about. Um, you know, well, I don't, um, I shouldn't speak for everybody. Um, but we don't have, uh, they don't reach out to us a whole, a whole lot. We get our, our meeting at the beginning of the year, pretty much the same meeting as the coaches get. Um, we do our testing. Um, as far as grievances and gripes, they're, they're always open. If, um, if I have something, I'll make a call over to, to Mr. Shufransky, um, which doesn't happen very, very often. But if, if there's something I feel that he needs, needs to know, always open. Uh, he always listens. You know, whether it gets acted upon has to be for the betterment of the game or whatever, but I've never had a situation where I've, I've been really upset with them and gone, you know, this is ridiculous what they're doing. Um, they're like hockey officials in the sense that they're getting pulled in a million different directions and everybody um, thinks they can do it better for lack of a better word. You mentioned Ryan Reichel. We had him a couple of weeks ago down here in Janesville and Ryan was oh, one of the, what's that? I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> well, you know, Ryan, Ryan was one of those referees who was a little bit tight on the whole mask thing. Mm -hmm. If players came out there and he made it very clear during the captain's meeting with coaches that this is what I'm looking for. If I see it, I'm going to call it. Mm -hmm. And he had a couple of times where he had to call it, but it's also something he covered in that meeting. And some of the players just were neglecting to do it. And he wasn't afraid to call a penalty for it. And, and that's great. Um, that, that's what we're like, we're trying to get to the end of the other side of this pandemic. And, you know, hopefully by the time we drop the puck back in, uh, in, in next November, we have fans in the stands and, you know, kids can wear masks that they want, but hopefully they're not mandated and we can just get on with it. But if we don't do it now, it ain't going to happen then. Very See, true. We, 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 we had, we had the you know the the president of the the Wisconsin or the the Wisconsin High School Hockey Coaches Association and that was you know our Brian Brandt not BJ anymore and we had the 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 head of the Wisconsin you know girls hockey association coaches and and so we wanted you know the the head of the Wisconsin Hockey Officials Association you know so you know we asked our favorite high school hockey official you know who that was and she said well there really isn't one but if you want somebody who's really good and can talk well, call Chris McGurk. So. <laughs> Chris, you got a reputation. <laughs> you got a reputation out there, Chris. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't we wouldn't invite Nikki on the show. She's not a sparkling conversationalist. <laughs> Nikki is a is a is a really great girl and she's turning into a really nice official I wish we could get more girls involved in in, in officiating um nikki does a nice job and and it's it, it's a little bit difficult um just given in, in a lot of cases girls are a little bit more laid back or a little bit um not as assertive um when they're not playing um as, as officials um you know there's some great great women official out there i've had pleasure working with some when i was working in NCAA women's hockey for, for 10 years. Um, but at the high school level, we just don't see enough of girls that want to do it. And that's, that's about how many girls officials do you think we have in the state, Chris? I don't think we have 10. No, no, I, I could be wrong and I hope I am, but I don't, I don't think we have 10. I don't think we have anybody here Northeast Wisconsin doing WIAA. I know we have some doing uh, USA Hockey and Youth Hockey locally, but at the uh, WIAA level, I don't think we have anybody working games out here. Being a, an assistant coach on, on a girls team, I haven't seen one yet this year or in the last couple. Until how, hard is, how hard is the jump, Chris, between being a USA Hockey official and a WIAA official? Um. Just if somebody's out there thinking about, well, maybe I, 
maybe I will, maybe I want to get into that. That's a, that's a great question. Um, the, the jump is, well, in our area, we're going to ease you in, you know, we're not going to, what, what we try to do here. And when I say we, I, I mean, the scheduler, you know, I, I, I'm asked opinions, but I don't do any scheduling. Um, we do try and just put them in, in a position to succeed. And when I mean succeed, put them in where we think they're going to be able to get the job or be able to do the job, be able to enjoy it enough to want to come back and, and to be able to be safe too, because, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in a hockey game. Um, so we try to get them in a position to succeed. Um, the jump, if, if you can work Bantam B or Bantam A, we can work you into um, JV games and to get your feet wet and get you on your way. Um, so I think that's the best way I can answer that question is if you can work um, decent level Bantam, we can make you a high school hockey official if you're willing. Chris. I, I was going to jump in there with just from, from my own experience, having worked um, USA hockey, uh, JV hockey, and done some lines at, at, at the varsity level, done some lines in the game. I mean, a lot of it comes down, well, I mean, obviously you have to have the, the, the mental aptitude and be able to block out the noise. But a lot of it has to do with just your, your skating ability. Um, I mean, you have to be able to keep, you have to be able to keep up at each level. I mean, you have to be able to skate at, at that, I mean, to, like even, even now, um, well, we, I, I haven't skated all this year, but like I me mean, last year I was playing hockey and I, I still think I could probably still do uh, uh, I, I, I even a refereeing at, at a JV level. Um, but uh, varsity and the lines that pass through the skate, the blue line, the blue line, just skating ability, I mean, just being able to skate and keep up. Um, it's, it's, it's a fast game. Yeah, and, and that goes to when you're 30, you, you work a little harder. And when you get older, you, you work a little smarter. Um, you know, being in the right spot it, is the key. And the more hockey you see, the, the you, you, you see a team for a while, you, you kind of know their breakout. Are they rimming it? Are they going up through the middle? Um, you can get your positioning on, um, in the end zone position when defensive team takes the puck over and kind of, Give them, the, give them room behind you to make that play, but you can't let the player behind you. You can let the puck go behind you. Um, you know, so um, the, you're absolutely right. We're, we're one of the, one of the major sports where our, our officials have to be pretty athletic to do it at the highest levels. Um, you know, you, you just, you know, no offense to anybody who, who, who's a basketball fan, but if you can walk, you can get on the court, you know, <laughs> um, if, if, with us, you, you have to have some aptitude in skating um, and, and experience as a hockey player is a, um, is a plus because you're able to read plays and, and know, you know, what's going to probably happen before it actually happens and position yourself accordingly. Heck, if you're doing home plate in baseball, I'm not even sure you have to be able to walk. <laughs> although, no, although Chris, you, you nailed it perfectly in that. Um, uh, as I saw from a, a post from a watching a football game from Troy Schwer, um, he was watching a, a college football game and he insulted the officials by you know, claiming this is turning into a basketball game. And that, I mean, the best way uh, hockey, hockey fans and stuff can insult the sport is to compare it with basketball. <laughs> yeah, my my boss my boss is a D one hockey uh, D one uh, basketball player back in his day, and, and <laughs> he uh, he slags me on hockey, but I it's a, but I told him you know I never really picked up a basketball in my life, but I can get into one of your basketball games long before you can get into one of my hockey games. So. <laughs> Chris, if you're a parent of a young player who's thinking about becoming an official. What would you? How would you explain to the parent to, uh, on letting that kid do it and what to expect? That's a great question, Dell. Um, 
here here in our area, we kind of hold a, um, a we, we uh, start putting out flyers in the rinks uh, during the summer to let them know that we we hold up a, a sign up uh, evening uh, where they can come in and ask us those those questions. Um, here we typically do it at um, the Appleton Ice Arena um, in in August, um, and the questions you know are typically you know what expenses are there to them, and the expenses typically are your USA Hockey registration. We have a local uh, fee, but we waive that for our first year officials because we know there's costs incurred. Um, so you, you have your USA Hockey um, fee, then you'll have um, your equipment and your equipment, your mandatory equipment is a helmet with a visor um, uh, and black trousers and skates and, and your, you know, of course, a referee's jersey. Um, so, as far as that youth get getting in, into a game, um, we're allowed to do it at, at, at um, I think uh, 12 years old at USA Hockey is, is the youngest. Um, I find that with no offense and it's not 100% true, I find that a little young. Um, I would rather see, it, see them come at 14 years old because they can handle a little bit more adversity at 14 than they can at 12 because I want that 12 year old to come back as a 13 year old and the 14 year old, the likelihood of somebody starting at 14, uh, coming back at 15 is, is much greater than that 12 year old coming back for a second season. So, um, you know, I would ask that parent is, is your child mature enough to take um, some sort of guff from an angry, um, oh, angry coach that probably isn't focused on what he should be, but he's turning his frustration onto the official, um, you know, in, in a, you know, with no offense to, to, you know, squirt C players, but, you know, a squirt C, you're going to have a squirt C official who's learning just as much as every player on the ice is learning. A squirt C official is also learning. So I would be asking that parent, is your, is your child old enough to, to, want to come back after he has a unfortunate encounter with a coach. Um, so th those are typically the, the kind of questions that a parent will ask. Um, I encourage everybody to try it. It it's great. Um, you know, I think I started refereeing, I want to say somewhere around 1979, um, gave it up for a little while. And then when I moved to Wisconsin, um, I was refing within a year of, of um, living in Wisconsin and uh, I'll tell you um, my best American friends typically are, are hockey referees. Um, you know, we, we, we do a lot of stuff together. Uh, we were at a wedding the other night for one of our officials. Um, it's, it, it's a great brotherhood. Um, it keeps us in the game of hockey, giving back to hockey and still staying in at a competitive um, you know, you get the competitive juices flowing, the adrenaline gets going, um, on, on every night you, you work, you know, you're, you are part of a game. Um, you know, you don't win, you don't lose, but you're always part of it. And it's a, and it's a really great feeling when that, when that game goes well and, 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 and you know, you did well. Chris, I'm yeah. down here in Janesville and then we've got the North American Janesville jets down here. And you talk about officials and a lot of these guys are, 24 25 years old really really young and they're you know they're taking on 18 19 20 year olds and calling games getting coaches you know that ain't probably not much older than them and these are you know as much as these guys get ripped on and you know squawked at and all that people also forget that this is a development league for them too if they want to make that next step into being a referee if they want to go up and you know if they want to start doing a for example, AHL games and things like that. Um, and there is an evaluator who travels and watches their games. And, you know, sometimes those evaluators, uh, you know, really find out re this, can this guy jump to the next level or is he just going to be stuck here? You guys have evaluators in the WIA at all? No, nothing's official, Mike. Um, our, our, um, we'll get a call from uh, somebody right around the time they start thinking about 
um, the the playoffs. We'll get we'll get a I'll I'll get a call. So some of the guy more veteran guys will get a call and they'll ask about other officials. You know what, what's he capable of, what he's not capable of. You know when when they're trying to do their their playoff um, pairings. So um, as far as that type of um, evaluation, there's nobody official. What we do get, Mike, is um, we have coaches rankings and, and um, it's not a perfect system and, and I'll, because it's not mandatory. And if it was mandatory, I, I think, um, you know, some coaches take it very seriously and, and do a real nice job on it. And others only do their rankings when they're not happy. Um, you know, I think there's a 48 hour window before they can, they can rank us. Um, but you know, not, not everybody ranks. It, it's not. Um, I, I wish it was a little bit more um, consistent, um, and not by the scores, but but by the the times that that were ranked. Um, you know, and just my opinion, I think that um, we should be able to rank each other as officials because honestly, we know what to look for. Yeah, you um, you guys are are together, and you know, you know yeah. how well, guys call it. Well, yeah, the, the the 48 hours is, you know, when they can actually send it in. They fill it out that night. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, no, I would really like to be able to, like, to let us kind of be part of that ranking system, too, just because I I know what I'm looking for in an official. And, and quite honestly, and some nights are good and some nights are, are bad. And the 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 officials that get to the next level are the ones that are able to look in the mirror and go well McGurk you suck tonight you know I don't need a coach to tell me I, yeah well I don't need a coach to tell me I suck I know when I suck and and then some nights I, I do but some nights you're out there and you nail it and you get everything and 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 coach isn't happy but you know yourself they did a great job and some nights you suck and coach go hey nice game tonight and you just kind of say yourself, mm, not so much, but thank you. Uh, I, I'd like to add one, one thing um, for anybody who's uh, considering getting into a fish, like, or especially, you know, for parents uh, of somebody who's a peewee or a bantam, you know, thinking, you know, they might get into officiating. Um, yes, you're going to take some, some guff from the stands uh, because, you know, well, maybe, maybe it's not so bad now because there aren't, you know, the parents in the stands telling, like you said, telling you what you should be calling. Um, but if you want to learn the game of hockey, uh, I mean, well, for, you know, learn the rule book that that's all that, that always helps, you know, and if you're an official, you have to learn the rule book, but to, to be able to stand and skate up and down the boards and watch as these other players, you know, try to do things. I mean, you can learn so much about hockey. Like, I mean, you see a guy coming in and you think, and you, you, you can see, look, you, you, you watch, this guy is coming. He's going to hit you, you know, like get out of the way. And you see this kid with his head buried down. I mean, you can learn so much about hockey just by skating up and down the ice as an official. I mean, it will make you a better hockey. It'll, it'll, it'll give you better understanding of, how the game is played, just be able to, to skate up and down the ice watching these other kids play the game. You, you can see, you know, he shouldn't have done that. Or that was, why did he, that was stupid. Why would you do that? You, why, I mean, let's like, say being an official, like it's a skating as a, as a neutral observer, you know, up and down the ice watching these kids play is a great way to learn the game of hockey. It, it's, it's a great experience, you know, for, you know, for young hockey players. Uh, that's a great point. Um, it's, uh, it, and it goes for coaches too. I mean, coaches can become great referees too, or, you know, you can learn a little bit more. And, and it's funny because um, everybody has a different lens that they watch a hockey game through. Um, you know, when, when I'm watch when I'm watching a hockey game, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a Toronto Maple Leaf fan. I'm watching the Leafs, right? It's the Refs suck every time so, the Leafs. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> every, every time the Leafs lose, they suck. But you know, so I'm watching the Leafs, but then I'm kind of got one eye, you know, on the official. And where is where is he? If if he gets himself into a bit of a jam in the corner, how's he going to get? How's he going to you know escape that that jam? Um, you know, what, what route is he? 
is he going to go behind the net and let his partner uh, switch off at top, or is he going to you know hold his position and and, and uh, let play develop around him? So you know everybody coach watches when he's watching a hockey game. He's not watching what the referees watch, and he's watching his team doing uh, what he wants them to do. Um, the the fan is is watching their player. So everybody watches that game through a different lens. Um, and um, it, it, it's just interesting um, to, to talk to somebody who watched the exact same game as you did and get their opinion of it. And it might be just totally different than what you saw. Well, I think one thing that as fans, we tend to forget too, is the view that you're getting. If you're the hockey official there on the ice or a football official, whatever, you're targeted to a certain view and if i'm within three feet of it of a play going on i'm not seeing what the wider view that the coach is seeing on a bench and if you're up in the stands you're getting even a bigger view and i think half the time you know just being human we forget that and you know and we let our emotions go where we shouldn't and you know as a, somebody that scheduled referees uh for youth hockey um, and then, you know, managed the rink here in Reedsburg for a while, you know, ske- the ice scheduling, it's different things that you end up paying more attention to with what you, the detail to your job. And, but I think that's the biggest thing for people to understand is there's the different perspective of what you're able to see because of where you're at and how close you are to the action. Uh, great point, Del. Um, like you, you, like you said, um, when we're on the ice, we're ice level, and players skate in front of us right at that at that key moment. Of course, they don't do it when we're not. <laughs> but you know, somebody will will skate in front of us, and we'll get an obstructive view, and that's why having two referees out there, you know, while you know, mom and dad are sitting on a blanket with with their hot chocolate and marshmallows, you know, we're down there, you know, <laughs> trying, trying to see everything that we possibly can, um, and and uh, you know, see without getting, but, you know, the, the good referees will, will try to get themselves in, in that right position and anticipate what's going to happen. That's pretty good stuff you brought to the table tonight there, Chris. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. More although I do like to, for. Hey, Chris, although I do like to watch Wes McCauley, it seems like he's always got something interesting to say. He, he, he uh, he's not afraid of that microphone either. <laughs> no, he loves it. Yeah. That's fun. It's funny knowing that he's a uh, Eric Fenton. His kids came through USM. That's yeah, Eric yeah. Fenton's brother-in-law. Oh, I did not know that. I, yes, I, it I, is. Yeah, he's married to Eric Fenton's sister. Oh wow. Okay. No, small I, uh, world, huh? I I do know Eric, so he, he never told me that. So huh? well, mm-hmm. we all know Eric quite well. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Great guy. Right. Did a lot for hockey. You bet he did. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else for Chris, guys? Do you Chris, think any referees are going to stick with the electronic whistle when this is all over? God, I hope not. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I, I, I don't like it. I, I don't think it. Uh, the sound carries enough. I, I, I really don't. I hope that doesn't happen. I, I, I was always a fan of the Acme Thunder. It could stop a charging phantom at 10 feet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's the whistle of choice for this guy, too. Whistle of choice, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Acme Thunderer. Okay. All right. I, I I will not be getting any uh, royalties or kickbacks from the Acme company. But if they want to, we'll talk. Uh, there are people call my we'll, we'll, yeah. your girl get a hold of their girl or whatever the case yeah. may be. Yeah. Guys, we done with Chris? I think so. All right, Chris, you're off the hot seat, dude. Hey guys, um, I just want to say thanks for everything you guys do. A great job of covering Wisconsin hockey. Um, your website gets a lot of clicks from my computer during the uh, season, and you guys do a wonderful job covering uh, hockey uh, in the state of Wisconsin, and it's greatly appreciated. You guys do a great job. Thanks. Who paid you to do that? Say that. Nobody. <laughs> Same guy who's paying me for the whistle. <laughs> hey, I'm going to just hang around and listen for a while. Okay. Chris, thank you very much. All right, guys, uh, let's move on to the rest of this. Uh, Sorry, glorious... I had to find it. Uh, the Acme Thunder. 
uh, for those of you who hadn't seen one uh, with with the the the, the wrist you know, the the finger cushions there you just slide it on uh, the middle two fingers of your your other hand there you, go. you need a little tape on the uh, on on the uh, on the other end so you don't break your teeth when you got it jamming in for that quick offside never had that happen so well you never called offside <laughs> it's good 10 feet offside but hey we're good good thanks, all right man. let's uh let's move on to our Wyndham garden madison fitchburg players of the week uh del scanlon what do we got well this week for our Wyndham garden madison fitchburg players of the week we're going to travel a little northwest in Wisconsin for our boys player of the week. On Monday, he had 12 saves in a shutout and seven to nothing win over whistle flag. Uh, on Tuesday, he had 48 saves, allowing one goal and a two to one victory over Eau Claire North. Wednesday, 35 saves and a three to two win over New Richmond. And Saturday, 26 saves and a five to two loss to the Hilltoppers out of on Alaska. And the player is goaltender Caleb Bentz of Somerset. It's the boys player of the week on the girl side. We have a player from Western Wisconsin. Uh, she scored four goals in a seven and un- zero win over Medford and the the girls player of the week this week is Aaron Simonson from Baroqua. And those are our Wyndham Garden Madison Fitchburg's players of the week. Back to you, MJ. Uh, a couple shout outs this week for other nominees. Uh, Brady Welsh of um, St. Mary's Springs. And I want to give a, a shout out to Chloe Tobin of uh, the Warbirds Co-op. Uh, their normal goalie, uh, Haley Shear, got injured uh, about midway through the second period in their game against Arrowhead on Saturday. And freshman Chloe Tobin, who had never played goalie before, stepped in, um, stopped 7 of 11 shots. Uh, they ended up losing that game 5-4 to four to Arrowhead, but um, I was watching that game uh, after it aired. I was watching the, the replay on Live Barn, and I was skipping ahead to the goals uh, based on the score sheet, and there was just this long break at 7.51 of the second period. And eventually I just, instead of like rewinding and finding out what caused it, I just tweeted at the teams like, what happened here? They're like, yeah, the goalie got hurt um, and they had to dress a new one. And I like, did she ever play goalie before? Nope. But yeah, she played a period and a half of varsity hockey, stopped seven of 11 shots, which is pretty damn good for your first time in net. Um, so yeah, Chloe Tobin, uh, good on you. What would make a, what would make a freshman want to get in there and have a, uh... Pucks flying at her. Somebody's got to do it. That's true. Those are our players of the week brought to you by our uh, Wyndham Garden Fitchburg location in the Madison area. Thank you very much for uh, the uh, people that were nominated. And you mentioned Brady Welsh. I was looking over his line and my goodness, he had quite the week as well. Bill Jr., you want to talk a little bit about the uh, Hobie Baker Award, correct? Well, you skipped over the top tens. Oh, well, okay. Well, let's back up. Let's go to the top tens. I... Top sixes. Sorry. Top sixes. Yep. Uh, top sixes. Only two unanimous this week, not three. Sorry, Chris. Um, <laughs> I wonder why that is. I wonder why. I wonder what coach keeps not putting the Fox City Stars at number one. Uh, number one for the boys, uh, Hudson, followed by Notre Dame Academy, Chippewa Falls, University School, Eau Claire Memorial, and Verona. Uh, Wassa West is honorable mention in D1. Uh, Division two, St. Mary Springs is unanimous number one. Lakeland is second. Rice Lake is third. New Richmond is fourth. Northland Pines is fifth. And Mosinee is sixth. And then for the girls, number one, but not unanimous this week, is the Fox City Stars, uh, followed by the Eau Claire Area Stars, the Western Wisconsin Stars. It's a lot of stars in three rankings. Uh, the Hudson Raiders, the Chippewa Falls Menominee Sabres, and the St. Croix Valley Fusion. Uh, so other than the Fox City Stars, uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all out of Section 1 in the girls' bracket. Well, you can't That's... really get any out of the Madison area down here just because no. everybody is playing Waha. Yeah, and, and you know, I told the coaches at the start of the year they can vote for the Waha teams if they want to, but... 
um, just because some of them are using their high school team for, for stats and stuff on our site. Some of them are not. It's kind of hard to tell where everybody's at. Um, Verona uh, is pretty much using the Verona page. Uh, the Madison, uh, the Polar Caps, I believe it's Memorial and West. They're using the Madison West page on our site. Uh, so we have a good idea of what they're doing. But for, as far as the girls goes, um, I don't know that what any of the Waha teams are doing as far as our site goes. We told them they can use it. Um, that's probably the easiest path is just to make it the same team but uh, it's hard to it's hard to do but yeah section one and what, 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 what when is the reconciliation but you look, also when you mention that you look at the uh tomorrow i believe go ahead bill tomorrow, tomorrow yeah t- tomorrow they will find out which teams will be coming back into the wia fold at least for the the playoffs in state tournament consideration I believe tomorrow is the deadline, and then the WIA will probably update their uh, their assignments or something on Tuesday. Their brackets? They won't have the brackets yet, because there's going to have to be seeding. And, you know, well, the assignments yeah, anyway. But you'll know yeah, who's in what sectional. Yeah, yeah. that's the, the, the assignments should hopefully be updated, so we'll know what's going to happen. Uh, what, when are Dane County ranks supposed to open? That's a good question, Dell. I mean, that's, that's why he asked. That I don't know. Um, all the teams that I've seen their press announcement that they're playing, like I've seen Verona is playing, Monona Grove opened up their winter sports. Everything I've seen said that they're playing competitions outside of Dane County. Um, so as far as rinks being open in Dane County, I don't know. I don't have. I don't know about that. That's but... not the school's call, I guess. At that point, no. But yeah, all the, school the schools that have the schools that have positively confirmed already that they are playing have they've all said that they're playing outside of Dane County. Okay. Everybody, uh, we should hear in the next couple of days. You would think that uh, you know what's going to go on, and you know what uh, a lot a lot hinging on what Dane County does. You know, and we kind of. Uh, kind of unfortunate it's that way but you know it's it's a different it's a different time i guess and uh we all have to adapt uh the hobie baker award i've gotten a few emails about it and um who would like to discuss that award it's a pretty doggone good award given out to a player from each team i guess that's uh i guess that's my responsibility now um, the Hobie Baker Award, uh, it is an award giving out, uh, that is given out by the, the Hobie Baker uh, group. Or, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, each school is asked to nominate a player uh, from, their, from their high school. It is a character award. It is not necessary. It's not like the, you know, the, Hobie, the, the college Hobie Baker Award, named for the same person, but it's not for the best college hockey player. This is a character award. Uh, this is uh, deserving candidates are selected by their high school coach based on the number of factors that demonstrate their character, including a positive attitude, outstanding sportsmanship, excellent worth that work ethic, unselfish team player, coachability, a great mo- role model, and exemplary citizenship. So this is this is truly about you know. The, the, the good guys on your team, not necessarily the best player, but just the guys that make the team better, make the program better. Uh, every team has somebody that fits this mold. So every team should send in uh, a nominee. And we, the, 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 the nomination forms on, are on our site. Um, at the top of our site, um, if you go to uh, seniors and Hobie Baker, uh, it's right there. Nomination forms. Send your your form in. They do. I mean, they, they ask. It, it's a voluntary thing. Uh, they ask for a, a, a donation from your booster club or something. It's not required, but um, we generally have good participation among the teams. Um, Last year, we had about 70% on the boys' side, 82% on the girls' side. Obviously, we would like everybody to participate. 
Um, but just s- send it in. Find somebody in your team, especially a senior. I mean, every, every team right now, every, every team is going through uh, extraordinary circumstances. Uh, you've got somebody on your team, you know, your, your seniors are being shortchanged out of their senior year. Um, you know, it, you've got somebody on your, some particular senior on your team who is, you know, doing his best to get his team through and lead his team through this. Recognize them, nominate them for this award, uh, do it for them. They deserve it. That's and if all not, I got to say. And if not, do it for Chris McGurk. No, no, not for Chris, no. <laughs> for Chris. But he'd be that referee we would uh, nominate, right? Well, I mean, you, you got it. One thing you have to ask Chris is, you know, whose professional career did you ruin today? All of them. <laughs> all of them. You know, but, but by, by calling a cheap penalty that, you know, knocked him out of the game, you know. That interference call, you know, Chris, there's so many uh, variables to that. Yeah, I've been fortunate enough to be on the ice with some kids that made some that are making some money at the game, so I didn't ruin them all. <laughs> or that too many men on the ice call. Really, his leg was over the boards. <laughs> Guys, any other thoughts for tonight? I'll tell you what. Um, I just want to give this out. Um here in Janesville, our coach, John Maurman, with this uh, pandemic, nobody, you know, we don't have the Big 8 conference play this year. That's out the window. He's put together a schedule, and he's worked very hard at it, and all the parents have been very appreciative knowing that um, he's, he's working really hard to put something together so our kids have, you know, can play. You make sure they're compliant uh, with the whole COVID thing. And this week he's rewarding them with three games. One at USM, one home against Edgewood, and one home against Fondy Springs. What a week coming up. Oof. Well, you know, with what you're saying there, MJ, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to all these coaches this year, adapting when games have been canceled, being able to fill them in. Uh, we t- talked to uh, John Welsh here a couple of weeks ago explaining how games were canceled. You know, Fond du Lac couldn't play, so they picked up game against Homestead, you know, when Fond du Lac couldn't play him that week, they picked that one up. Uh, one of their other games had gotten canceled and uh, they pulled RWD in who hadn't been on their schedule. So all these coaches, you know, from both the boys and girls side are having to adapt at this season. And, and, you know, as Chris said earlier with the referees, you know, their schedule on Monday looks like this. And by the time Saturday rolls around, everything's changed, you know, for the, coaches the players and the officials the adapting that they've had to do this season you know kudos to all of them well mj i i can tell you from uh well from from bill's brother when when he played at the high school level that uh three games in a week was great because like you know tuesday thursday saturday games were his favorite weeks because uh practice the day before a game was generally a light practice because you didn't have to work too hard. So you got three light, a light practice a game, a light practice a game, like that. That's the perfect week for him. <laughs> That's exactly what these guys are going to get down here. And, uh, but boy, you talk about a tough schedule. Oh my goodness. Go and beat a, you know, all three of those teams. That's a tall task with the yeah, talent. Well, I mean, uh, all too many couldn't get Notre Dame in there and just make it the four pack. No, I, I agree. That's, you know, we, schools. we should have played them today. I mean, why not? I don't know. I'd, I'd be I'd, I'd be nervous. I was watching University School and Spash on Saturday, and I was doing something else, and that game was just on in the background. And I looked up, and all of a sudden, USM had like four goals, and I'm like, it was just nothing, nothing. Like they, they just piled them on. It ended up being a five-one game, but they just piled them on. That's a that's a scary good team. I did USM last week against um, Wausau West, and they are very good. Um, I get the pleasure of doing them against Notre Dame this coming Saturday, which um, should be a lot of fun too. So, USM. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We, we have, we have to. Is there going to be a live stream of that? No, I'm canceling it all. 
No. We're going to have to feature that on our site. Uh, Chris, you're not, officially not, not that to, one, right? Not, not yeah. just for you, but yeah. Yeah, Mike. But mainly for you. You're going to run. You're going to run the helmet cam during it, right? Yeah, I don't want anybody to see what I see, <laughs> <laughs> and all my excuses go away. Well, see, turn your, turn your I, microphone I thought Chris on. was going to write our game article for that one. Oh, I, I, where, where, where is that game going to be played? Cornerstone. I'm going to have to send Bob over there to take pictures, just to, just on the off chance that you fall on your ass again. <laughs> that's not a chance. That's that's a likelihood. <laughs> <laughs> it's if, if Bob is taking pictures of Chris, Chris is either going to fall on his ass or he's going to take a slap shot to the back. It's one of the two options. <laughs> but I keep coming back. That's well, right. who's the stupid one? Yeah, taking I mean, quite a few of those. I'm, I'm sorry. You've taken quite a few of those during your career. Um, slap shots still, to the back. Well, still, yes. in the back, just taking pu flying pucks. I mean, just, to, just, I mean you're, you're an older guy now. You're 61. You can't get out of the way as fast as you could, probably. It's, it's a fact. Um, not a, not an awful lot. Um, this year uh, in the in in the USA uh, hockey part of the season, uh, there was a, a USHL uh, tournament in Green Bay where I, I took a pretty good one on the inside of a thigh, just a kid Ouch. rimming it. And, yeah, it wasn't pleasant. Um, but – it's we're, we do have some some padding, you know. We, we have shin pads. Um, you know, you spend some money, you get a good pair of pants with some padding in. But you know, in fact, in the last couple of years, I um, I bought one of those uh, football under vests with some padding here on the shoulder and the kidneys, just just for just a little bit. Plus, it acts as a girdle. I don't look as fat on the ice. <laughs> well, so I, I think I think you gained weight because you look a little bigger overall. Yeah, well. Pandemic has got us all in in different ways. I can't, as I can't imagine Boy, is it ever. dropping the puck on a face off without shin guards. Hmm. Guys do it. <laughs> I don't know how, but guys do it. So yeah. Not this guy. All right, guys. Anything else we got for tonight's show? Um, just thanks to Chris for coming on and putting up with our questions. Oh, that's great. I love it. Yeah, we sure uh, we sure appreciate it, Chris, and thanks for hanging in for the whole show. And uh, um, I'm sure our paths will cross somewhere along the way. Yeah, we won't see you in Madison, will we? No, no, don't look like it's going to be that way unless something bizarre happens. But we'll we'll see. Doesn't look like it at this point. So, uh, thanks for coming on. Enjoyed this a lot. It was fun. A lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys, that'll do it for uh, Dell. The two Bergs, Chris McGurk, thanks again. You've been watching and listening to This Week in Wisconsin Prep Hockey.